for once, while I'm filming outside, there's nobody else outside. Maybe I've just jinxed it. Maybe people will come outside and start working on their lawn while I'm awkwardly talking to my camera. But for right now, there's nobody here and it's, it's really putting me at ease. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So today's video is going to be kind of similar to a series that I have on my channel, which is the funny secrets behind my cosplay photos series. But instead of secrets or fun facts or whatever behind a specific photo, we're gonna do fun facts about cosplays that I have done. This was a trend on Instagram stories for a little bit. Back like six months to a year ago, it was like an asking where people would like respond to your story with a cosplay that you've done and then you in turn tell them a fun fact about that cosplay. I thought this concept would lend itself really well to a YouTube video. I thought it'd be a great concept for a YouTube video. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna be looking at some of the cosplays that I've done and telling you guys some fun facts about those cosplays. So without any further ado, let's get into it. I had myself centered so beautifully, but now I have to move over so that I can put a picture of the cosplay next to myself. So goodbye to that. Goodbye to being nicely lined up with the backdrop. Anyway, um, we're gonna start with Pomni. The fun thing about Pomni is that I knew I was gonna cosplay her before I had even seen the show. Like just from like seeing screenshots and fan arts and stuff online, I knew that she was gonna be my favorite. Like sometimes when you do a cosplay, you just kind of know. You can just kind of instinctually like look at a character and be like, ah yes, that's gonna be my favorite. And then they are your favorite. So that's exactly what happened with Pomni. I saw her and I was like, that's who I'm gonna cosplay. And then I watched the show and I was absolutely right. So I had actually started like planning out like in my mind what I was gonna do for her. I didn't do anything like tangible because you don't, you don't wanna do that before you actually have like confirmation that that's the character you wanna be. But I did, in my mind start planning things out like preemptively and then luckily she did end up being my favorite. Cassie, so this is a cosplay that I, I keep forgetting that I've done to be honest. Like when I think about cosplays I did last year, I completely forget about Cassie. She was a, a whirlwind of a cosplay. My fun fact about her is that I made that sweater in one day, which was very shocking to me. I thought it would be, you know, maybe a few days to make that. Um, but I sewed all of that in one day, was very proud of it. Um, and that wasn't cutting corners or anything, it just like, came together in a day and I was very shook by that. Lapis, this is one that was brought up in the Instagram stories game thing. Um, so it's, it's quite a throwback. I did Lapis like probably about 10 years ago. She was like my main comfort character and Steven Universe was my main hyperfixation. Um, and I did many different versions of her. The fun fact about default Lapis is that this was before we did arm socks, this was before we did tights, this was before we did uh, body suits. I nowadays just make really tight fitting body suits to, to look like arm socks because uh, it's just cheaper and easier than using tights. But all of my person in that photo is, is body painted using Schnazaroo, which is the worst body paint you could possibly use for that because it's, it's meant for like, you know, face painting like stuff on your face. It's not meant for like full body coverage. It's, it's great if you want to like paint a flower on your cheek, but if you want to fully paint yourself, it is not the kind of thing that you want to use. It's not very well pigmented. It doesn't stay on very well during the day. Um, it's water-based, so if you sweat, it, it's done. So we're using a very like not suitable body paint. It would take three hours to do that full head to toe body paint. I'd need the help of a very patient assistant. Um, so what I would do for cons is I would wake up really early and eat breakfast and then immediately like be in the bathroom for three hours just painting myself. And then I'd get a friend to help me with my back. And that was the life we lived for doing Steven Universe. It's just what we did. <laughs> and let me say never again. I, that will never be me again because that was a lot and I, I could never do that nowadays. Another one that people had asked me about was Meg. The fun fact, um, which it's not really a fun fact, but it is, it is a fact, is that that wig, completely in line with popular belief, uh, that wig is very heavy, uh, or was very heavy, I don't have it anymore, but it was very, very heavy. And it was, if I don't anchor it properly, it like pulls on my hair. And there was a day when I hadn't anchored it properly and it was pulling on like 
the hair on on like the top of my head. It was so painful that I was almost in tears and I had to like take the whole wig off and just like not have it for the rest of the day. Uh, this was Sakura Khan like, a, like many, many years ago. And um, actually my friend's brother-in-law was like teasing me for having taken my wig off and I was not having any of it because I was like, dude, I was in so much pain I was almost crying. So shut up. The wig is very heavy. So if you ever want to be Meg, uh, just know Gwen Stacy. So the fun fact about Gwen is that that wig, um, they do have pre-made Gwen wigs, but um, that is not what that is. That is two wigs that I had gotten that I decided I didn't have a use for as like as they were. So I decided to just splice them together. So I literally cut up that blonde wig and like sewed it together with the brown wig and then painted the roots and it's janky for sure. It was my first time ever doing that kind of wig splicing. So if you really look at it, it's, it's a little janky, you know, but overall, I think it does the trick. It was a very fun challenge. Fun fact about Kylie is that I, I've gotten better over the years, but um, chemicals in general just freak me out. Like I, I don't like Plasti Dip, I don't like resin, all that stuff really freaks me out. So for Kylie's gun, I used a water gun for the base and I was too scared to spray it myself. So I had to get a friend to come over and like spray paint, who loves spray painting? He's totally fine with spray painting. So he spray painted the gun for me and then I did the weathering and glued all the extra parts to it and everything like that. I've gotten much better. I'm not good at spray painting because I like want it to be over and done with really quickly, but I have gotten better at not being afraid of spray painting, so character growth we love to see it julie i love cosplaying julie oh my goodness people don't really recognize who she is but the people who do they know what's up julie has this huge poof in her hair and you can do that by like doing a foam core and everything but at the time of making that cosplay i was more like kind of casually invested in that cosplay now i'm much more invested so i i might do a foam core and like redo the wig and make it like super poofy because i've become much more invested in her and much more invested in welcome home but at the time it was more of like a casual interest so i wasn't as hardcore about it so what i did was i just made a little pillow that i pinned to my head and then put the wig um over top so that gives it that bump, which has worked pretty well. But then I bought a new wig at SakuraCon and it's much heavier because it's an Arto wig. The other one is an eBay wig, so it's much uh, lighter and it, it poofs much better. But the, the new one that I bought is much heavier because it's Arta. So it didn't actually do the poof as well as the original wig. The point is, is that there is literally a pillow under my wig and um, I just think that's hilarious. Glamrock Chica. So this one's really funny. I for some reason got my references mixed up when I was making her. So I was looking at the figurine when I was like looking at references. I, I like figurines can be great for references. Like I've used um, the fig, the picture of the figure for Fallon um, as my main reference because it's like, it's a three dimensional like representation of the character. So it, it can be easier to like see how certain pieces uh, work. But in this case for Chica, it, it it messed me up because um, for some reason her figurine is different from her in-game look. So the color blocking on her leotard is different in like her in-game model versus on the figurine. So I went with the figurine and inadvertently made my cosplay inaccurate because in-game that's not what her bodysuit looks like. So messed myself up there. So I have a very specific Chica, which is specifically like the Funko action figure version of Chica, which I didn't even mean to do, but that, that's what ended up happening. Jenny or XJ9 from My Life as a Teenage Robot. If you saw my Jenny walkthrough, you already know this. So feel free to just skip skip through this. But um, I decided to buy some boots. Instead of like making boot covers or like making boots out of foam because they wouldn't travel as well, I decided to get some uh, pleather boots and paint them and a friend had recommended this specific brand of leather paint to me to paint the boots with. So I thought since they're big boots and the containers of leather paint are like this big, I thought I would need a lot because I'm thinking like that's not a huge amount of paint. So I bought three containers 
of this paint. I go to use them and it turns out that they're like super pigmented. They go a really long way. Like you really don't need a lot of paint. So I ended up using maybe like about a half a container of paint in the end. And so I had two and a half containers of paint left over. Um, and I was so upset because it's ex they're extensive um, and I had just like bought way too many. I have learned my lesson. When it comes to leather paint, you really don't need a lot. So you can definitely get away with like one container um, for painting boots. Final one that we're gonna look at is Ragatha. I do have a Ragatha walkthrough all filmed and I just never edited it. So if you guys wanna see that, hopefully it would not be like too late to put it out. I guess it's never too late, um, but I just kinda like filmed it and then didn't get around to editing it and then forgot about it. So the fun fact about Ragatha is that, um, well, it, it wasn't fun at the time, but in retrospect, it's a fun, it's, it's funny. So on her dress, she has like the stitching on the different patches. And I had initially just embroidered them on, um, on the sewing machine by like going back and forth with the sewing machine. And I'd done this all over the skirt. It looked a little off when I was doing it, but I thought like as, as, as a complete unit, it will look good. I'm just, I'm just being overcritical. I need to trust the process. Um, I should have trusted the process. So I had embroidered most of the patches on before I realized that it looked terrible. Like it was pulling on the, the fabric is very light. And so all of the stitching kind of torqued it all out of shape. Like it looked really bad. So I had to go in and seam rip all of the embroidery off of all the patches that I had already like done and it took a very long time and it was very frustrating, um, but I ended up doing it in the end and, and it, it, it was very much worth it because I then went in with some vinyl, some pleather, cut little strips and then sewed those on as the stitching and it looks a million times better. So very much worth going back in there and fixing it, but at the time it was, not good. <laughs> anyway, those are some fun facts behind my cosplays. I hope that that was entertaining and maybe brought you some laughs. And yeah, that's it. That's all I have for today. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys all next time. But until then, Panda Faces, please be sure to take care. Bye.